Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Fire, and welcome to Best Women Gamers, a series where me and many women in the gaming industry talk about stories, experiences with gaming, future dream goals, and more. Women don't get the recognition that they so rightfully deserve in this industry, but it's not too late to start giving some, so why not start here and now? Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell for more content like this. This week, we are joined by Violet Cutie and McKay. Violet's story for getting into Rainbow Six Siege is very moving, something you wouldn't expect a person to get into a video game for, but nonetheless, very inspiring. She does production for CCS Esports and is very involved with community event type things. McKay really wants to get into the competitive scene and grow as a player. She doesn't have as much of a presence online, but she was still super fun to play with, is very personable, and has what it takes to become a pro. Please welcome Violet Cutie and McKay. Well, uh, I guess the first one's kind of plain and simple. Um, who are you and uh, where are you from? Who are you, McKay? Uh, I'm McKay. I'm from Ohio. That's really all there is to me. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm 19. I'm 19. Okay, cool. A year on PC and like a year and a half to two years on Xbox. Her nickname is OK K McKay. That's a Violet's nickname for me because I played <laughs> CS Go with her once. <laughs> what about uh, you, Violet? I'm Violet? Violet. I'm from Canada. I'm 26. I've been playing for about a year and a half. And I like to shoot people in the head. <laughs> That's about it. Alright, well, how did you guys, um, get into video games? Like, why did- What- what interests you about video games? Um, I got into video games when I, like, right before I started high school, I- Oh! Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I started playing Black Ops 2 on the Xbox because we had an Xbox and I was like, Oh, this seems kinda neat, I've never done this before. So I started playing one in the chamber on Black Ops 2, and I did that a lot. Like, that's really the only thing I played for a while, like, with one in the chamber on Black Ops 2. And then that's really the main game that I ever played on Xbox in general until Siege happened, when I got my Xbox One. Okay. Mine's a more dark and turvy little road. Um, All right, let's go down it then. <laughs> so... Most of my life is just like I've been bullied and stuff in real life and like we moved around so much So I like never had the chance really to make a lot of friends and do a whole lot that involved in that aspect of things and So I like had to mature and grow up fast and take care of my siblings. So like um, Video games was like my escape from all of that So like I've been playing video games since I was like super young when I uh, I started on like my Sega Genesis and my N64 and it was really fun. I played like Super Mario games and Sonic and Zelda, all that jazz. And then I switched to um, playing on computer, playing World of Warcraft and stuff. And then I got an Xbox 360 and I went like semi-pro in Halo and then I switched to Call of Duty and then I eventually switched to PC where I started out in CSGO and then after a bit I guess I kind of dabbled in some rainbow. <laughs> so then rainbow is like where you ended up? Yeah, rainbow is where I am at right now. Why rainbow? Um, so about a year and a half ago, like around when I first started playing it was like October. Uh, I didn't re really start playing. I like played a little bit, but I was like watching some streams and stuff. And in October, I was playing a couple games and streaming myself. And I reconnected with um, my high school sweetheart, uh, who was really, really close to me. And I like, it was never the right time for us. Like we were going, we were always like, hey, let's hit that date. And like, we never got that chance, you know, because like I lived in a different city or he had a girlfriend or I had a boyfriend or it was always never the right time. Mm -hmm. um, well, in October, one night he was going to come play with me 
but it was like 4 a.m. and I just I wanted to go to sleep, you know. Mm -hmm. So I chose to go to sleep, and it was on a Monday. And then that Friday, I fa I found out from one of his friends that he had actually hung himself, and that was like a very, very emotional deep cut for me because like like I love this kid. Like he was he was my high school sweetheart, you know, mm -hmm. and like. He told all of his friends and his co-workers and his HR lady, like, that I was the love of his life and everything. And it, like, it just, like, really hurt and it sucked. And then uh, when I was watching some streams and stuff, I came across uh, Pengu. And it was really weird because, like, Pengu looks just like him. The one that hung my, like, high school sweetheart. And it was, like, really weird to me because, like, Pengu looked just like him. And just watching Pengu stream and stuff and Pengu, his kind words to me and like telling me to like hold on and um, to learn from everything that's happening. Like his kind words got me into playing more and realizing that there's actually like a nice community in all of this and just to keep going and stay strong and try to make something of where I am, you know, mm -hmm. to be who I want to be. And so that was really nice, and now I'm playing Siege. <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that's super deep. That's really cool, though, that he was kind of like a, um, a reminder of, um, I guess, your ex? <laughs> yeah, we never got the chance to get together, but... That's cool, though. I'm, I'm glad that that Pengu is someone that you could like kind of look up to and see that this is a a good um like a a good community to get into just by the toxicity every now and then. Yeah. What about McKay? Uh, I don't even remember why I got Siege. I just remember uh, for Christmas my sister needed to get me something. She was like, McKay, what do you want? And I was like, yo, Siege looks kind of cool. I don't have any games that I like on my Xbox One. You can give me that. And she got it for me. So, um, not as moving. <laughs> but <laughs> that's why I started playing it. And that's, it was one of like the only games that I had on my Xbox One at the time. Aww. Um, yeah, I had like Battlefield 4, I think. And then that was it. No, no, I had another, I had a Call of Duty game. I had Infinite Warfare, which I did not like. I did not like the, it was the new one that you can like exo jump and stuff. And I did not like that at Advanced all. Advanced war war Warfare. But the newer one. And it was like, I didn't enjoy it. So once I got Siege, like my friend started playing with me and I thought it was the coolest thing. Like I was really bad at it. I didn't do well ever, but I thought it was so cool. And I have been playing it pretty much since then. Like exclusively Siege. Um, are, I worked hard for it. Are both of you guys in an org? No. No? Uh, no. I recently- Not departed. technically. Um, work-related, yes, kind of. It's more of a company than an org, like a league. Okay. Um, so I'm an observer and whatever they need me to help out with and etc. Uh, production staff, basically, for CCS. How did you, how'd you like find the league? How'd you get into it? Um, <laughs> after watching streams of Pangu, I found a league that was playing and they were like, hey, we need an observer and you guys can apply here and we can't continue to stream because we don't have an observer. Sorry, we'll stream our games in the future. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, well, I'm available. I'm a fast learner. And they were like, okay, we'll put you on right now. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> here's how to do this, this, and this. Good luck. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> and then they really <laughs> liked it and kept me on. And then I've done um, observing for DreamHack, Montreal, and CCS, and some um cl and just random gigs here and there you like it oh yeah uh i want to like 
I don't like want to do observing in the long run though. Like I want to be able to like help community manage and like um do more casual side of things like media, social medias and stuff like that, like helping and maybe even coaching. Because I really like like boosting people up and like networking and stuff, mm -hmm. like talking to people. Well, yeah, that, I guess that goes into my next question. Uh, did you, do you guys have plans on becoming like, uh, like huge pros and like really making it in the industry or like what's, what's like your goal? Um, with where you're at with, you know, gaming and everything? Um, I used to. Uh, I have a couple different life plans that are taking me elsewhere, but like once I got into comp, like I was like, holy crap, this is something that I love, you know? Like, like I love that like try hard, that rush, you know? So I've been on a couple women's teams because CCSW was planned um, to be in a couple months, so I was like looking into that. Um, and I really liked it. I at least wanted to become a little pro in the women's community, you know, mm -hmm. not like a legit pro, but I really liked it. You know, I've done CL quals, which I love, like I'm making, um, since I can't do anything long, long term right now, um, I have like a small temporary team that I'm going to do a league with, you know, so like if I could put that time and effort into like going places, I would, but it's just like life is taking me elsewhere, which is okay. But I do love the comp and wish that I could. Uh, for myself, I don't... Like, I I think yeah, I wanted to be become pro, but, like... I just don't ago. know if I... Like, I definitely have the time and the effort the and everything to do it if I really wanted to. No but I just... Profession. I don't... I couldn't make a career out of it. It doesn't pay enough is that if that makes sense mm -hmm. and like it's never about the money it's not about the money but i at least have to have like some sort of stability you know what i mean mm -hmm. and the comp scene is extremely all over the place especially as shown recently with like teams getting dropped out of pro league and stuff mm -hmm. like one minute you know you have something the next you don't you know what i mean and that's like really hard to go into something like that so for me, like I, I don't want to leave the the esports community at all. I want to be able to evolve and learn with organizations and like go with organizations, you know. Yeah. And that's why I want to like be able to go through and maybe join a org and help them grow and join like a media team or like make a career out of that in some way whilst so that I can still stay in the esports community and the esports industry. Yeah, that's cool. I like that you guys still like doing this cause kind of like as a side thing, but um, like you're chasing your dreams, other dreams yeah, while you're like, pursuing it. Like right now, um, I'm trying to set up still, like I'm trying to get the graphics and uh, new discords and Twitters and everything set up to like have Women Wednesdays and stuff where we uh, promote women in the community and game with women in the community. Uh, it's going to be uh, different games and platforms I, I want to like branch out to and it'll have like spotlights like esports spotlights kind of things of just women in the community whether they're a gamer whether they're um, just on, in an org or helping out like like Lisa let's say from Ubi, she's doing as best as she can. She's awesome working with everybody. And like, just like promoting those women individually. I like that. That's super dope. That's like a huge highlight on women and, and like actually showing their, uh, their presence yeah. in the industry. Since that's like your goals, what's something that you are like proud that you've already accomplished? Like what's your proudest moment that you've had? I mean, I definitely having... like the place that I'm at right now, you know, like I'm not like known at all, but like I have my mutuals that are cool, like on Twitter and things like that. I'm it's cool to like be able to have conversations with people and like we know the same people and like we can it's like this small little community that exists. So like it's kind of cool to be a part of that because like I've never really been a part of like that kind of community and like been able to talk to people like that and like just have conversations like, oh, yeah, I was talking to this so and so and they're like, oh, my gosh, I love so and so, you know, like have those kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. um doc is fun peeking in garage Five by the way seconds. um and <laughs> just like i don't know that's neat and i just like the oh, fact wow. that like oh, even violet has seen like where i've come from and like just like in terms of skill wise but other than that no really big major thing 
Uh, for myself, like the one of the proudest moments was that like just getting recommended as an observer for DreamHack and getting accepted to be an observer for DreamHack. Like that was a huge thing for me and I was like super proud of that. Um, it took a lot like of people to believe in me and believe that I could do these things. And to see that like it paid off was amazing like i went to dreamhack i observed all the offline matches i got so many compliments and like people wanting to um invite me to other things and like i got invited for face it like just all these different like opportunities it was really awesome to me and like being able to be observer for charity events and whatnot like that was just super cool yeah that sounds super dope like being able like that's one of the things I love most is like once you get into something like your connections start to blow up and you start to like meet a lot of new people and your relationships like you get re you like start to find like really cool people like um and not even in just the gaming industry but just like like you can find people like everywhere that's why I have like a LinkedIn and I like find people that aren't even in the gaming industry but um I like form really cool relationships with people that's like probably one of my favorite things about um, just networking in general is the relationships that you get out of it because then you can you can get some really good opportunities from it who so I, I guess you kind of answer this question a little bit um, Violet um, with Pengu but who who would be your guys just like who's your biggest role models either either in the gaming industry or out of it um, to kind of like that's inspired you to be where you are right now um, I think that, like, for me, one of my, like, biggest inspirations, because, like, as a streamer and stuff and a content creator, it was Pangu, but, like, as an overall community member is probably, like, Wa Rob Walker for CCS, because, like, she just, like, sees ideas and, like, tries to put them in the action and, like, oh my gosh, I'm crying. <laughs> He just like, he's there for everyone in the community, like, he has your back and... When CCS uh, W became an idea, he wanted to like take that idea and make it reality. Like he he wants to be inclusive and like help everyone in it. Like it's incredible. That's why he got his reward at at the um the event that just happened last February and stuff for being like a community leader and whatnot. Like he's in a fa he's a fantastic guy. For me, it's kind of, I watched, so the first time, I never had really watched, like, Pro League and things like that. Like, I, like, had never thought of myself as, like, somebody who was able to do anything in the comp scene. Like, I knew people were on teams and things like that. But, like, I was never like, oh, yeah, I could totally do that. So watching CCSW was a big thing for me. I had been on PC for, I don't know, like, two months when it started happening. And so it was, like um watching it i was like oh my gosh these women are so freaking awesome you know like i thought it was the coolest thing ever and just like getting to watch them like every wednesday like i looked forward to it i was like whoa this is something that like i could do and it was i don't know probably ccsw for the most is like the the women that like i started using twitter because of ccsw you know mm -hmm. like i thought it was really cool i wanted to follow all the girls on there um, no major person, just because, like, I'm not as involved in the community and, like, the business side of things, but that's probably, like, my general. Since, like, this community obviously isn't, um, all butterflies and rainbows, um, what is, do you guys have any, like, moments of toxicity that, like, you'll never forget that you've had in this game? There's way too many toxic experiences for any of them to really stick out to me. People are just nasty mm -hmm. in general. I know that like sometimes like I'm literally stacking like with two or three of my friends and I'll be like, hey, make this call out in game. You know, like that guy doesn't sound like like a nice person. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, I don't know. I remember That's that. I was always the one making call. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Personally, like, sometimes I just don't like I don't want to deal with it. Like people are just... I don't like to deal with them because it's just like I don't like people who are rude for no reason um, and that's a lot of people in this game yeah um, so how do you how do you yeah. deal with toxicity uh, depends on the kind of toxicity um, if they're like 
like in terms of like just random games i'll like antagonize them for a bit and then mute them you know like i get over it mm -hmm. and i don't think anybody's ever really like been mean to me to the point where like my feelings were like genuinely hurt you know like i'm i'm good about like like separating it like oh they're literally just stupid mm -hmm. so that's not like a big thing to me um one thing though is like in scrims like every, so every once in a while we would like try and set up scrims and i didn't like the toxicity that we got there sometimes so like sometimes we would have to use text chat and like we wouldn't even like go in voice to like be like hey are you guys ready we'd always type because mm -hmm. like every once in a while if we talk in voice like it just if they're beating us you know they they just get super rude or if they like i don't know just they turn into like sexist pricks it's yeah it's and then they don't like actually scrim they just like do a bunch Troll of and run out and jump out and... yeah my experience with like trolling and stuff is like is just constantly i think in ranked games um i think it's more in unranked that i see it happen though um but a couple things that like have st stood out to me like that i've experienced is actually more women hating on women which is like not cool because like you want to be able to support each other and build each other up not break each other down yeah um like there's been a couple times where i've played with female streamers and they just like i don't know they like it, it, unless you're part of their group or their their little niche click that they have going on they're just completely disrespectful to you and that's not all female streamers it's just a select few that i have experienced mm -hmm. um where they'll play with you and then they'll leave after you lose one or one or two games and automatically they just talk shit about you on their stream. Like, oh my god, she was laughing the whole time, or oh my god, she's so annoying and can't aim, or she can't you know, like like little things that like you don't think would hurt, but like you're intentionally doing or saying it to hurt that person, or if they watch the VOD back. And I don't I feel like we shouldn't be breaking each other down. We should be building each other up and like helping each other. Like if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all your drone to locate mm -hmm. a bomb. type of situation. And like a lot of the time in the game, it's a lot of people are just like really rude. They'll call you names and they'll TK you. And the best answer that the community has for that type of thing is mute them. And I don't, I don't feel like that should be the route i feel like there should be a better reporting system and reporting people so that they if you're going to be disrespectful you got to face the consequences and that's removing your ability to play or your ability to talk or your you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i feel like there should be act there should be consequences to people's actions instead of just mute them like that should not be something that people automatically turn to when they hear somebody's being rude mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I agree. Because then, if you if you mute them, then it's like basically giving them power. It just it just angers them more. It gives mm -hmm. them power, angers them more, and then they TK you. Like mm -hmm. it just it's not a solution. Yeah, it's a uh, it's super unfortunate. So I've gotten a lot of um, girls that talk about how they just don't even go on comms because it's just not worth risking mm -hmm. getting you know mocked or whatever sexism that takes place um and it's super unfortunate it's something that i absolutely hate because you should never like have to be afraid to talk that's like a basic human right and it sucks yeah. that we can't even talk when you're when you're playing video games just trying to have a good time so what is there anything like any changes that you do want to see happening? Like, is there anything that you've thought of that you think would help with sexism in gaming, or or just any changes that you want to see in general? Um, I believe the at the invite the in Montreal, um, they released that they would be coming in with the like what's it called like the reputation system. Mm -hmm. Um, that, I like that idea that they presented, they, I mean, I'm not, I don't remember when they said that it would be released, because, like, sexism, sexism in general, I mean, is toxicity, so, and people are toxic way more than just sexism, like, sexism is only, like, a small part of it, like, people mm -hmm. are just mean in general, 
Um, so I, I like that. I like the reputation system and being able to like match up with people with the same reps and whatnot. I just like in general think that there should be like a better reporting system and a better way to promote women in the community and stuff because like a lot of the spotlights are um are men and like this isn't about like female or male to me it's it's about accomplishments they present males in the community that do certain things but then there's also women in the community that are doing the exact same things that aren't being presented you know or highlighted and i feel like it should be more inclusive to everyone in the community like no matter your gender or your age or you know what i mean like if you accomplish something like that should be promoted that should be showed that should be showcased it should be out there more mm -hmm. and uh i feel like i don't know how to include that more or um expose that more you know what i mean mm -hmm. um Nice. But a reporting, a better reporting system would be really nice to have, like, where you, for example, so if somebody is toxic, it should say, okay, how? Like, there should be more options. Toxic because he's being um, sexist. Toxic because they're being extremely rude to somebody who is younger. Or, like, or an option to include a note, like, why is this person being re reported? You know what I mean? Like, a lot of other games will have that option where you, like, write a note with it. Or you can just submit it. Mm -hmm. But having more options than just toxic, because it... Yeah, it is toxic, and yeah, it, it, it overall is toxic. It gets put into a pile where you're like... It's just this huge clump pile. But if it was more categorized, I feel like the bans would be more justifiable and, like better to um go through them to see what happened you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh -oh. so then they can have a better uh consequence for the situation happening like the more severe the less severe you know what i mean mm -hmm. like oh my gosh he said that i gotta push you there like that's an auto ban but calling me a stupid whore and saying i can't play the game because i'm a girl that's that's somehow, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's somehow allowed, but saying Did you last a word you? isn't. Like, you can't even say the C word and like words like that. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely I like agree. A better system in place than that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Like, have uh, that would be good having it categorized so like certain things would be targeted more. Yeah. Um, because then that would bring awareness to certain things and they wouldn't just be all kind of like lumped yeah, together. Yeah, like, what's wrong? What thing. can we do to change it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess my last question is, um, do you guys have any tips or advice on, um, streaming, playing games, handling toxicity, or just anything, anything in general? Uh, for toxicity, just like, like they're only being toxic like they're just they're literally just dumb like you yeah, can't get upset about the things i mean obviously okay let me rephrase that you can get upset by the things that people say but just understand that like the things that people say have like no merit and you shouldn't be taking them personally because the place that that person is in their life for them to be talking to you that way and to be speaking oh, to they you that way just is like the completely stairs. below the level that you're at and like you need to understand that like there something is wrong for them to think that that is okay and like try not to take things like that seriously or to take them personally and to just like i don't know literally just brush it off because people are dumb and people will always be dumb and unfortunately that is something that we have to accept um for i don't really stream consistently but if you want to start streaming just do it like just go for it like you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. For me, it's just don't give in. Don't listen to what they have to say. Um, basically, like what McKay said, just like one in one ear and out the other. Don't take shit from anybody. If you want to do something, do it, grow. Do you promote yourself? Don't give in to 
anything that like people want if people want you to scream with more tits don't do it do you mm -hmm. don't listen to what anybody says make something out of yourself not out of what others want mm -hmm. um for streaming and stuff be consistent you want to be able to grow a community and stuff you have to be consistent you have to have have to be streaming like every day or every couple days like make a schedule it doesn't have to be every day but like make a set schedule for yourself and set yourself to that schedule if life is becoming too much take a step away you don't want this to become um necessarily a job you want to be able to still love doing it and love who, who you are doing mm -hmm. and a lot of people i feel lose themselves in everything mm -hmm. and become someone they don't like anymore um, so yeah, just like make sure that you're making time for yourself as well as your gaming community. Mm -hmm. I would say the same thing for comp too, since I'm more on the comp side yeah. of things. Like for one, I was so scared to get into comp. Like I tried out for a sub role, even though like I wanted to be on a main roster position, like I wanted to play, you know, like I still tried out for a sub role cause I was so scared. I was like, I am not good enough for this. Like, I don't even know the first thing to do about comp. So like, if you have any interest at all, if like like take an opportunity like if somebody says like hey we need a sub totally go for it like that's how you get your experience if somebody like if there are any like if you have any inkling that you might like it try it because like you're gonna be upset like if down the road you're like man i could have like started this forever ago you know mm -hmm. and that's something like just don't be afraid like it's really intimidating because area. like i know for me i'm just like well i'm not that good or I like I just like comp seems so much different than ranked like I'm not sure that like I'll be the best fit you know things like that and that like really like kept me from starting earlier on but then I was like you know what I'm just I'm just gonna go for it you know what I'll, I'll try it and yeah, like, like show the that, initiative yeah like it's seriously one of the best things that I've ever done I love the comp side of things it has made like my enjoyment playing this game even more than it already was you know I thought I loved this game and now I love it even more because there's a whole there's a whole other side of it that I can enjoy now mm -hmm. and it's just like it's it's neat so like definitely just like don't be afraid to start don't be afraid to go for it and just like give anything a shot that you're willing to and if like if you put in the effort like you'll do you'll do awesome is there anything that you want to promote or anything uh well the whole woman Wednesdays thing but I'm not like I don't have a whole lot set up for it anymore because uh, my Twitter got banned I have no idea, well not banned, it's suspended indefinitely, and I have mm. no idea reason or why or what. Uh, it was literally just promoting women, so it was like really weird that they just got rid of it. Yeah. So I have no idea outside of that. Well, I I would be glad to help you with anything that you need when it comes to that, because um, my goals with that are very... Um, Aligned, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna die. Have faith. You're right. <laughs> Just shits on him. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I guess that's it then. Thank you guys for taking the time to talk to me and stuff. I'm excited where this series is gonna go. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate. It. Yeah, I appreciate it too, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. We gotta win this game now. And now we <laughs> slam them. <laughs> we can focus now.